Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, so we have Emily Turnbull with us. How are you, Emily? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, not a problem. And you play in the women's VFL, yes? Yep. So I play for the Trobe Uni and we're in Division 1 of the VWFL. Amazing. Are you in finals time at the moment? Um, no, we just missed out on finals oh, on percentage, boy, oh, so boy. that sucks. But That's all right. Next year. Yeah, Next exactly. season. <laughs> Emily, how long have you been uh, playing footy for? Um, so I started playing three years ago now when I moved down to Melbourne to go to uni. Yep. And uh, uh, what was it that sort of made you want to play? Was it? Uh... Um, probably the club atmosphere. The club's really friendly and I wanted something to keep me fit living in college. <laughs> so I didn't want to put on too many pounds. And Smart. <laughs> I've always loved playing footy, but there wasn't much opportunity to play growing up um, in my area. So I thought I would give it a crack. And Yeah. Do you think it's important for females to be represented at a really high level of football? Oh, definitely. And I think it um, will kind of have a flow-on effect. Like, now that they can play at such a high level, people will be working to that high level as well. And all the junior girls now have something to aspire to, which is awesome. And you see your heroes on the big screen, and that's pretty cool to watch. Yeah. Did you uh, watch the match on Saturday night? Um, I was actually at the match. So a few girls from the club, we all went and had a great night. Outstanding. Uh, do you think the, the introduction of the women's AFL uh, will see if women's footy numbers grow across the country? Definitely. Like already the amount of new clubs, the amount of new girls we get at the club who have never played footy before but see where it's going and want to have a go. And yeah, there's new clubs coming every day, which is awesome. That's outstanding. So you're here um, on Upstart Live with myself, Alana. We've got Morgan and Josh in the studio, as well as Emily Turnbull, uh, talking all things women's footy. And soon we're going to have Erin Riley on the phone as well to discuss. Uh, we have her on the phone now, actually. Um, so Morgan, if you could Perfect just quickly timing. tell us um, what Erin Riley does and a little bit about her, and then we'll get her on. Yep, so Erin Riley is a sports journalist. She covers a lot of different areas, particularly has a strong focus on sport and gender. So she's perfect cool. for this topic. Let's let's ask her some questions. Erin, hi. Hello, Erin, are you there? We'll try one more time. Hi, Erin, are you on the phone? That's okay. We'll just keep talking to Emily. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll just keep talking. <laughs> Emily, I did want to ask about um, you were there at the game. There was only 6,000. But did it feel like there were a lot more people than that because the atmosphere was completely different? It's a completely new vibe. Um, did it feel like there were more than 6,000 people there? Definitely. We kind of had a little game between us trying to work out how many were oh, nice, actually there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it was packed and we were like – my friends were joking about there being a roar like at the MCG and there actually was at one point there was Yeah, huge, girls can scream loud. Huge crowd yeah, presence. They, can, they sure can. <laughs> and there was girls behind the goals who they knew every single player's name and they knew like what they'd um, been doing for the sport and it was awesome just to like everyone just knew so much about it and they were really happy to be there kind of thing. That's awesome. So I think we've got Erin now. Erin, hi. It's Alana from Upstart Live. Erin, are you there? Hi. Oh, yes, hi. Sorry. Sorry about before. Um, lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for talking to us today. How has your morning Thank been you so far? <laughs> oh, it's been all right. Good. Um, now, we were just talking to, um, we have a Latrobe footballer here who's in Div 1 at WVFL level, um, and we were talking about the game on Saturday night. Did you happen to catch that one? Oh, of course. Wouldn't yeah. Have it. it was <laughs> fantastic. I um, can't believe there's like a million viewers. When I found that, when I saw the stats, I was blown away. I was excited, but I wasn't actually that surprised. Um, just listening to the chatter, everyone was excited for the game. And um, I think that there's a very vocal minority that, that aren't as excited about women's footy, but I don't think that's, that's most people by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, hi, Erin. It's Morgan here. Hi, Morgan. Hi. Hi. Um, so do you think it's important for grassroots levels to have these sort of representatives in such a high level? Absolutely. Um, I think that the grassroots um, sort of top level dichotomy is a little bit false. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have a pathway, but also just to inspire young girls and um, even, you know, women my age who I get out and kick a football around. I'm a... Uh, eagerly looking for teams to maybe join next year. And in regards to the pay gap, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm really unhappy with it. Um, I think that, 
you know, no one's saying they should get paid the same as the men straight out of the gate. Uh, but I think it's not unreasonable to expect a fair living wage, at least for the weeks that they're, you know, playing on the weekend and also training um, and then in pre-season training as well. So I think that, you know, it's a league that has shown it can invest substantial money in um, in investment um, and in the growth of the game, as it did ahead of GWS and Gold Coast coming into the competition. Um, the Emerging Markets Fund between 2007 and 2014 had over $100 million spent. Um, so it's definitely a league that has shown it can invest um, and will invest. So I think, you know, we're not, again, not asking for that same level of investment, but even a tenth of that but, in that first year would be phenomenal. Sorry, Erin, but in regards to, say, the Matildas, who have been around for a very long time in sport, they're still not even making the cut for money. Should we be trying to... I don't know. I know it sounds hard um, to say, should we not be looking into women's football because it's so brand new? But in at the end of the day, there have been female athletes um, who have you know, represented Australia and are on a much larger scale who aren't getting the same amount of money just yet. Um, should we be looking at those first? Uh, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's uh, all at once. Yeah. Um, and it is worth noting that uh, because the women's league was coming on, there was a bit of pressure on um, cricket to yeah. renegotiate their deals. And the women got a, a much better deal this year. Um, and, and netball, um, with the new competition, is looking at a much better deal too. So this is something that's changing. Um, the Rugby Sevens team, the women's Rugby Sevens team, got a big pay bump earlier in the year. Um, it, it's not acceptable to continue to pay women at, at such low rates. Mm. And um, I think that you know it is changing. And for a competition as big... As the AFL, it has you know almost a billion dollars in revenue a year. Um, to look at that and expect women to essentially work for free, which is what they're doing when they limit the number of hours they can be paid to train at nine hours a week. Um, no professional athlete is going to be able to to do their job in nine hours a week of training. So um, you know the options are either you know their per hour pay goes down or they're, um, they're not getting paid at all for, for some of the things they have to do. And I just don't think it's reasonable for a competition of the scale of the AFL to expect its employees to make those kind of sacrifices. So a question for both you, Erin, and Emily. Um, I have a quote here from Asta O'Connor, who is a new player, and she said, I do understand the public's point of view when we compare them to men, but I think... The whole point is we are not men, we are women, and we are creating our own space, and that's an amazing opportunity. Do you think it's enough that it's just opportunity, or do you think it's pay? I don't think they're unrelated. Um, I think fair pay is going to be important to make the competition great. Um, aside from anything else, it's going to be important to uh, equalise across the teams. Um, so, you know, if you've got a team where they're able to pay the players um, to have roles within the club outside of football, they're going to have a lot more flexibility around training and around that sort of thing than players who have to find their own second job. So I actually think it's about the integrity of the competition. Absolutely. And you, Emily? Yeah, I think if the AFL wants a professional league, they need to pay them professionally as well. And there's a lot of women who are going to have to toss up all their options and whether they're going to have to take time off work, which is going to come out of their own pocket, or if they're going to have to take time off study. So it's kind of a lot of options to weigh up and you might be missing out at girls that would be really good footballers in that sense as well. well okay. I think it's a diversity issue there too. Um, you know, it's going to limit the, the, the diverse range of footballers who can be involved. And, you know, I'd like to see women from regional areas, from Indigenous backgrounds, from low SES backgrounds, be able to be well represented in the competition and making sure that that isn't something that's a financial burden for them is going to be an important part of that. Thank you so much, Erin. That's, inc that's so true, especially a regional. Hopefully we can get a lot more women out playing. But thank you for speaking to us today. And same to you, Emily. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, you're listening to Upstart Live. The time is 2.47 on this Tuesday afternoon. Next up, we've got Carl Humphreys talking to us um, about the safe space letters.